construction of cdna library cdna here stands for complementary dna so let us look at the learning outcomes of the session cdna or complementary dna is synthesized using rna as a template with the enzyme reverse transcriptase and then that cdna that is formed is cloned in a suitable vector a cdna library basically represents the mrna population present at a particular stage in an organism which is converted into multiple clones containing small dna fragments cdna library is a collection of genes that are expressed in a cell this decreases the screening time to obtain a clone of a gene of interest in eukaryotes genes have introns which are spliced out during post transcriptional modification and therefore cdna will contain no intergenic sequences or one can say that cdna is an intronless gene so let us understand what is cdna library so when you look at the workflow of preparing a cdna library the first step is isolation of rna once the rna has been isolated using the rna complementary dna is synthesized and then the complementary dna that is obtained is cloned in a suitable vector depending on whatever is the size of the complementary dna formed a suitable vector has to be selected and then this vector is transformed in a suitable host of course the host that is selected would definitely depend on whether it is only for cloning or you also wanted to use it for expression now let us understand this in a little more detail so from a cell say for example which is having a certain functionality the rna is isolated now from the rna what is of interest in the cdna library is the mrna once one gets the mrna to the mrna is added primers that are complementary to the mrna and they can bind to each and every mrna and using these primers you have the reverse transcriptase that will use the rna as a template and synthesize a new dna okay so reverse transcriptase is a specialized dna polymerase that can use an rna as a template and synthesize new dna so it is basically an rna dependent dna polymerase so what you will get is a rna attached to a new dna that is synthesized now this hybrid is always going to be unstable so an rna dna hybrid is always unstable and hence hence the rna has to be denatured removed and in place of that using the dna complementary dna a second strand of dna can be synthesized so now what you get is a double stranded dna which is complementary dna is called as the complementary dna because it has been derived from the mrna now this is then uh, inserted into a suitable vector and this suitable vectors or these vectors are then inserted into suitable transformed into suitable hosts so therefore a collection of these host cells containing the vector with the cdna is what is called as a cdna library so uh, what is of importance to understand is that when you have uh, the transformed bacteria or the transformed cells with the uh, cdna you have the master plate ready so each colony that is growing on the master plate will have a clone that is a cdna clone and what is important is to identify or what would be the task eventually after getting the cdna library is to identify that particular clone which has the specific gene of interest now let us look at the first step itself which is rna isolation so the cells are homogenized and these on homogenization are then mixed with triazol reagent triazol over here stands for total rna uh, isolation uh, reagent 
uh, these are commercially available and they are they are commonly used for isolating rna so once you have it mixed with the triazole reagent then one adds an organic solvent to have phase separation so you get the aqueous phase and you get the organic phase and the aqueous phase is then collected and subjected to precipitation ethanol precipitation or isopropyl alcohol present, uh, precipitation to get rna now this therefore the rna that has been obtained is the total rna However, for cDNA library formation, what we are interested in is the mRNA. Therefore, from this total RNA, mRNA will have to be isolated. So, uh, what can be done? Okay, now before we go into how the mRNA can be uh, uh, isolated, let us understand that an mRNA that is formed will have the 5' UTR, the 3' UTR would have the open reading frame. And an mRNA that was the primary transcript has been processed to remove all the introns and have a 5 prime cap and a poly A tail. Which means that once you have the primary transcript formed, the primary transcript undergoes post translational, uh, sorry, post transcriptional modification, what is also called as RNA processing. The introns that are present are all removed. Uh, you have a poly A tail formed and you have a 5 prime cap being added. Now, strategically, therefore, you would definitely understand that it is mRNA that has a poly A tail. So, this poly A tail can be used strategically to separate out the mRNA from all the other RNA. So, what is done is generally in a in a tube is taken beads that contain oligo DTB DT that is oligo deoxy T's. So you have a stretch of T, okay, anywhere from 2 to 10 uh, uh, 10 uh, mer thymine. So this oligo DT can actually bind to the poly A of the mRNA. So when you add the RNA that has been extracted. The RNA extracted has a total RNA. So when you add the RNA that is extracted, all the mRNA will bind to these beads because the mRNA has the poly A tail and these A's can bind to the oligo DTs. So when you wash this, uh, uh, this, uh, uh, these beads with buffer, all other RNA will be removed except the mRNA will remain bound to the oligo DT beads. Now, what can be then done is that the elution buffer can be used to now remove the mRNA from the oligo DT. So you use a denaturing agent in such a way that it is able to extract out the mRNA from the oligo DT beads. So what you will definitely have now is the mRNA with poly A tails in a pure form. Then using this mRNA, which of course has the poly A tail, and again, therefore, the poly A tail can be strategically used in such a way that the primer that can be used for synthesis of the complementary DNA can bind to the poly A. So one can use a poly DT. The poly DT will act as a primer. The, uh, uh, this primer will have a 3' prime OH end over here. And that 3 prime OH end will be used by reverse transcriptase. This reverse transcriptase can read the RNA and synthesize the complementary DNA. So you can see how because the RNA is a poly A tail or has a poly A tail, one can use a poly DT as the primer to synthesize the complementary DNA. Now this is what is understood as the first strand synthesis. So the first strand of the complementary DNA is formed. Currently, what you observe over here is a duplex, but the duplex is an RNA-DNA hybrid, and the RNA-DNA hybrid is not a stable duplex. So therefore, essentially, this RNA has to be displaced, and in place of the RNA, a new DNA strand has to be synthesized. So therefore, what is done is to enable synthesis of a new DNA. On the other side, one can add another oligo 
uh, DN. That means you can use, say, for example, a CCCC over here. So when you uh, when you uh, use the enzyme to synthesize the homopolymer tailing uh, tail, this can now be used strategically to add the primer. So what is going to be added as a primer is going to be the GGG. And using this GGG, the, uh, the DNA polymerase can bind to this and synthesize the new strand. So therefore, effectively what you would get is a, a cDNA duplex, okay, that had been formed originally from the mRNA. So when this is formed, this is what is called as a second strand synthesis. Now, this can be inserted into a suitable vector because this is now the DNA that is basically the gene without the introns. So this is an intron-less fragment of DNA that can act as a gene. So the advantages of cDNA library is that the library contains only clones of expressible genes. Why do we say this? Because an mRNA is formed only if the gene is expressed. And you're using the mRNA as a template to form the cDNA. So therefore, you would get a library containing or suppose you take a kidney cell then the library that you will get from that would be different from the library that you would get from a liver cell because you have differentially expressed genes in these two cell types. So therefore, the library will contain clones of expressible genes. The eukaryotic genes have introns, but the cDNA is obtained from a processed RNA and therefore it will be intronless, number one. And second, the size would definitely be much lesser than the gene itself. Therefore, the number of clones that you would get would be comparatively lesser than that you would get in genomic library because in genomic library, you will get clones of non-coding genes as well. That aspect is missing in the cDNA library. So therefore, uh, Post-transcriptional modification does not become a limitation to select a suitable host. So even if I have a eukaryotic gene, that eukaryotic gene may be cloned in a bacteria and expressed in that with the, uh, with the limitation of the bacteria having not much of post-transcriptional modification capacity being taken care of. The second thing is that the sequence, if you sequence the cDNA that is formed, you would get the sequence of only the coding regions. So these are the advantages of the cDNA library. So let us make the conclusions. mRNA isolated can be used to synthesize the complementary DNA, which then can be cloned. The cDNA library stores clones of genes that have been differentially expressed. The cDNA synthesis requires the mRNA to be used as a template by reverse transcriptase. The first strand thus synthesized becomes the template for the second strand synthesis. The cDNA has the advantage of being intron free. Relatively, it is smaller in size than the gene itself and therefore the library size, that is the cDNA library size will be comparatively smaller and hence less tedious to screen. So a cDNA library is a combination of cloned cDNA, complementary DNA fragments inserted into a collection of host cells, which constitutes some portion of the transcriptome of the organism. Why do you call it some portion? Because you're only looking at the mRNA. You're not looking at the tRNA and the rRNA and snRNA and the other uh, non-coding genes. But that itself is stored as a library. Thank you.